Hello world, I'm Matilda. Today I will talk about the Start with Why book. And this was a book about uh, how to create great companies. Not with just like a short term success, but like generational companies that uh, live throughout decades and uh, that will create a lot of value. So to achieve this, he, he tells us that we must start with why. And uh, starting with the why is a, a way of thinking, acting and communicating that gives some leaders the ability to inspire those around them. And uh, every person or organization needs to motivate others to act for some reason or another. But, but uh, like the thing is that motivating, motivating isn't that difficult. If you have a product that uh, people ge uh, generally buy, so for example, a pen, you can uh, decrease the cost of the pen and uh, people will buy that pen. But uh, like you won't really make a lot of money. Great leaders, in contrast, are able to inspire people to act. And uh, our behavior is affected by our assumptions or our perceived truths. And um, to demonstrate this, like people in the medieval times thought the world was flat and they didn't really explore the world around them because they thought that the world was flat and they're like they could fall over the edge of the world and they didn't want to die. So their perceived truths affected their behavior. So like how to make rational decisions? Then uh, logic dictates that uh, more information and data are the key. But uh, there are times when we ignore data and we just rely on our gut feeling. And we will explore this topic more in depth later. And the surprising thing that uh, he asked a lot of companies of uh, why their customers are their customers. And he said that most companies have no clue about it. They think that uh, because of their superior quality, features, price or service. But uh, that's not very true because in today's world, uh, most products are available for like a pretty low price from China or from another country. And he said that there are two ways of uh, behavior to, and that there are two ways to influence behavior. The first is to manipulate and the second is to inspire. So first it explores the ways that the businesses manipulate their customers. First, they manipulate with promotions. Like uh, if you buy a car or if you buy a camera, you will get a free SD card to that camera. They also manipulate with fear. A surgery might say that uh, every 36 seconds, someone dies of a heart attack. So it shouldn't be that person. They like motivate us with aspirational messages that tempt us toward something desire, desirable. So for example, in six weeks, you can be rich. And uh, they also manipulate us with peer pressure when they say that like uh, the majority of the population choose this product or like the majority of the experts, like five dentists out of uh, Six uh, recommend our two space compared to other two spaces and uh, the newest set of shiny object objects designed to encourage a trial or a purchase. What companies cleverly disguise as innovation is in fact novelty. So, for example, foldable phones or like these X wing crazy phones, they are not really innovation, they are just novelty and uh, that you can flex with. And uh, these manipulations do work. There is no question there, but they only work in the short term. They generate one-time transactions, not loyalty. And uh, manipulation became the norm with companies. And uh, with every price drop, promotion, fear-based or aspirational message and novelty, we used to achieve 
our goals, we find our companies, our organizations and our systems getting weaker and weaker. So the 2008 collapse of the housing market and the subsequent collapse of the banking industry were due to, were due to decisions made inside the banks based on a series of manipulations. So we have quite a bad system, as you can see, but uh, then comes the solution and that you should start with a why. And he starts, started off by uh, telling us about this golden circle. And uh, there are three circles inside of each other. The biggest circle is the what. And uh, every single company and organization on the planet knows what they do. They usually make money. The how, it's the smaller circle. And uh, some companies and people know how they do what they do. So for example, you sell lemonades to customers and you make money by this. Or you create uh, like very tasty lemonades compared to other lemonade makers. And uh, why? Very few people, and why is a small circle, and uh, very few people or companies can clearly articulate why they do what they do. So I may, I sell lemonades to make people happy. And it said that like companies usually like they go from inside to the, uh, from outside to the inside. So they want to make money. So they like create, uh, create computers. So for example, Apple makes computers. So let's uh, look at a marketing message from Apple if they were like everyone else. So we make great computers. They are beautifully designed, simple to use and user-friendly, one by one. That's quite a bad marketing message. And uh, let's look at how Apple actually communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use and user-friendly. And we happen to make great computers, one by one. So people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So Apple, instead of going from the outside of the circle, to the inside, they go from inside to the outside. So they start with saying like why they do what they do. And then they like, that's the side project that we also sell computers. And that's why Apple has such loyalty because people resonate with that message. And uh, for example, Apple didn't invent the MP3 player a company called Creative Technology did. But uh, the problem was with their advertisement. They advertised it as a 5 gigabyte MP3 player. That's quite boring. Instead, Apple, they said that it's a thousand songs in your pocket. So this message is much better. And uh, if companies define themselves by what they do, price, quality, service and features become the primary currency to motivate a purchase decision. So for example, um, Apple makes great uh, smartphones, but there are a lot of Android uh, smartphone manufacturers that like also make great smartphones. But uh, Apple makes most of the mm, profits in the smartphone industry. And why is that? Is that because they have like a, a loyal customer base who buy their products, like whatever the price is, while with the Android manufacturers, they have uh, like largely the same phone with the same chips and the same operating system. And they have no brand loyalty. So the companies will like win who just have the lowest price and the most features. And that's why they don't make a lot of profits. And they said that like our biology works in the same way. 
with this why and what you do. And uh, we speak with our neocortex. So our the part the neocortex part of our brains control our speaking and language. But we make decisions with our limbic brain. And uh, there are situations when like something is presented to us that uh, is very logical. So like there is data that the people who use this product they make more money or they are happier. So uh, but we stick with our gut decisions even if uh, logic dictates otherwise. We go with our belief and feeling. And uh, we say gut feeling because our neocortex doesn't know like why the limbic brain does a certain thing. And the uh, limbic brain not only controls our gut decisions, but it can influence us to do things that seem illogical or irrational. So the neocortex doesn't know why the limbic brain did certain things, so it says that like uh, we rely on our gut feeling. And uh, this is what we mean when we talk about winning hearts and minds. So you must win the heart because uh, we make decisions with our hearts inside instead of our minds, even if our logic is inside our minds. And the uh, products with a clear sense of why give people a way to tell to the outside world who they are and what they believe. And uh, without uh, knowing the why, any attempt at authenticity will always be inauthentic. inauthentic. And uh, only when the why is clear and when people believe what you be believe can a true real relationship develop. So if you do business with people who you have the same belief, trust emerges. Because if you have the same belief and the same goals, you won't cheat each other because you have the same like system that motivates you. And uh, the goal is to hire people for your company who believe what you believe. Because then they are willing to put in the necessary work. So you can like make people work more, work over time with bonuses. But that's just a short term solution because after a while they will like uh, they will want to have more bonuses. But uh, if you if they believe in the mission, they are willing to work over time without much compensation. So I think this is a great time to introduce Tesla into the topic. It wasn't in the book, but I think it's a great example. Elon Musk is a leader who is able to inspire others, whatever you think about him personally. And Tesla is a company with a clear mission. Their mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. So employees do crazy hours there, so they work a lot, but they, see, they say that it was the most fun in their lives ever because they believe in the mission and they want Tesla to succeed and they are willing to put in the necessary work without any, without much compensation for that. And uh, companies with a st strong sense of why are able to inspire their employees. And uh, you should believe that you can do it and your company can do it and trust your people to do it. Because only with mutual trust can an organization become great. So then it talked about the adoption life cycle of a product. And uh, there is a book about this that the book that this book referenced. It's called Crossing the Chasm. And I made a review out of it. So I will link it in the description and it's on the screen now. You should check it out because it's a great book. And it said that uh, like there are multiple adapters who uh, like this is the life cycle of a product. They usually start with the innovators and the early adapters. They are usually around 13% of the whole user base. 
And after the innovators and the early adopters, there is the majority. But the majority has like completely different needs than the early adopters and uh, this leap when you have to uh, cross the chasm to the early uh, to the majority, it's very difficult. And it said that like you should focus on the early adopters and the majority will come, but you must start with a why. Because if you have a clear sense and a clear mission, like the majority will ca- catch up and eventually. So it said that uh, more than anything else, what Martin Luther King Jr. gave us was clarity, a way to explain how we felt. So everyone was there in Washington the, way, the day he gave his famous speech, I have a dream. Not because of him, but because of themselves, because uh, Luther King had had a mission and had a belief, and uh, he explained how he felt, and people went there because they had the same belief and they wanted to show to the world that uh, they also have the belief. And for example, people buy Teslas because they want to show it to the world that they are green and they want to save the planet from climate change. And um, he said that like the vision and charisma of the leader are enough to attract the innovators and the early adopters. And these people will make the necessary efforts and attract the majority. So, for example, Martin Luther King wasn't a legislature, legislator, but he inspired the people and the legislators to make the change that uh, we all wanted. And um, the marketing efforts of the company should be to communicate its why with stories and actions. So Tesla communicates that it wants to change the world by making sexy sports car that uh, they, they don't harm the planet. And uh, people buy that because Tesla has this big image and this big brand and everyone knows that like they are changing the world with sustainable energy. And people buy Teslas because they are great cars and also because they like believe in the mission of Tesla and they believe in the mission of Elon Musk. And uh, people will buy your product if they can show their beliefs with it to the world. So we all want to be understood and accepted. So we buy iPhones because like we are modern and we believe in great companies and we want to think different than others. And uh, if you have a clear why, it's easy to make decisions inside your company based on that. If you Tesla knows that like they want to ch- accelerate the transitions to sustainable energy, it's pretty clear how to make decisions. And uh, the problem is that big corporations often lose the why of the companies. For great leaders, the golden circle is a balance. So I think Google, Apple, unfortunately with the passing of uh, Steve Jobs, they lost their uh, they lost their mission. So the mission of Google was maybe don't be evil. And uh, Apple to think differently, but uh, both of them become these major companies that they despised. And for great leaders, the golden circle is a balance because uh, it's easy to like have a mission and have a goal, but it's more difficult to stick with that decision and stick with that goal because if when a company gets big, it's difficult to keep this balance because you have a mission, but uh, you want to make money. And if you would lose this mission and you would ignore it, you would be able to make more money. So it's quite difficult for big companies to to, like put the mission forward instead of making money. And um, the last thing it said that uh, if a company is managed well, it's quite easy to deduct the mission of the company based on their products. 
So for example, the mission of Tesla is to accelerate. Yes, I said that before. I think I say it too often, but uh, they show it by having uh, cars that don't harm the planet and having uh, solar panels that can harness the energy of the sun and convert it to, and they have battery packs. To, so they have this whole ecosystem that uh, you can help the world and uh, save the world individually. So I think this was a great book. I think there is something to this big uh, message and uh, a mission of the company that others can join to that mission. And they join a movement or they buy a product because they believe in that company and they believe in that mission. And they want to show it to the world that they believe in that mission. So I think there is something to it. You should subscribe to my YouTube channel, but let's start with the why. Why you should subscribe to my YouTube channel? You should subscribe because I share the thing. I, reading is great and uh, you should le read more and uh, learn more from reading because all the knowledge of humanity, I think it's in books. And uh, like, how do I do it? How do I teach you more? I read one book every day and I share the things that I learned from that book. And I like you can only read the books that I recommend and read the books that like interest you based on my introduction. Uh, so I have a YouTube channel, you should subscribe to that or I also have a podcast on, on all the major podcast platforms. If you want to reach me, you can reach me in the YouTube comment section or I also have Twitter and try to be active there as well. So thanks for coming in. Bye bye.